I had previously done a video about Pantera's first three albums, sometimes referred to as their glam years, when Terry Glaze was fronting the band. But after three records with Glaze, the band wanted to go in a heavier direction, being influenced by the likes of Metallica, Motorhead, and Slayer. They would end up parting ways with Glaze and hooking up with frontman Phil Anselmo, who proved to be the missing piece for Pantera to reshape metal in the next decade. Today, let's explore how Phil Anselmo joined the band and his first album with the group Power Metal. After three glam-influenced albums, Pantera had built up a solid base of followers in and around the Arlington and Dallas-Fort Worth area. This was all despite the fact that their sets relied heavily on cover tunes. Despite a strong local following, the band struggled to get any kind of record label attention, with bassist Rex Brown claiming that the band had been, and I quote, turned down by major labels 28 different times. However, there was one record label who did show some interest in the group, and that was Gold Mountain Records, who had a distribution deal with MCA. They had considered signing the band when Glaze was fronting the group, but with him leaving Pantera and the band changing their sound to be more aggressive, that dashed any hopes of the band getting a record deal with the company. It would be the likes of Motorhead, Slayer, and Metallica that gave the Abbott brothers some idea of where they wanted to take the band's sound. By this point in time, the band had already recorded a majority of their fourth record, Power Metal, even having ex-frontman Terry Glaze lay down some vocal tracks, but they would be scrapped from the album once Anselmo joined. Prior to Anselmo auditioning, the band did try out several frontmen, including a David Coverdale lookalike, and they even brought back their original vocalist Donnie Hart, but it just wasn't a good fit. Funny enough, Hart was still in the band when Anselmo joined Pantera, but we'll talk more about what happened between the two frontmen later in the video. Anselmo would hail from New Orleans and was in a band prior to Pantera called Razor White. He knew Pantera since they played on the same circuit of Texas and Louisiana clubs, and he would reveal to the Phoenix New Times. So when I first joined Pantera, it came about because we were playing the same circuit. I mean, New Orleans is only an hour from Dallas by airplane, so we were playing the same places really. We'd always heard about Pantera because they were supposed to be the band that was going to be the next big band, and we all knew about Dimebag being a great guitar player. Word got out that their lead singer of many years, Terry Glaze, left the band and they needed a new singer. My name came up and they got in touch with me and I went and tried out one night. We jammed. It was a bit brief but an awesome experience. Four days later I'm back in New Orleans. Dimebag called me up and said, what do you think? I asked about what. He said they had a gig in Shreveport and asked if I wanted to come jam. I flew to Dallas and the rest is history, he'd say. In a separate interview, Anselmo would recall the specifics of their musical discussion, revealing his audition consisted of Iron Maiden and Judas Priest covers. One of Anselmo's earliest influences was the live Judas Priest record Unleashed in the East. In addition to jamming on covers, the members also played in some of the demos they had for Power Metal, with the frontman recalling, wow, you're heading in the right direction. That's not to say Anselmo didn't have his own set of influences that he brought to the band, with Rex Brown revealing, Phil started turning us on to all kinds of different stuff that we hadn't listened to before, because he turned out to be the biggest effing metalhead of all time. He knew every effing band there was to know he'd recall. The music that Anselmo introduced to the members included bands like Venom, Soundgarden, and Merciful Fate. While bassist Rex Brown was still a fan of hair metal, he knew Anselmo had a lot of promise and was a missing piece for the group, recalling in his autobiography, from the first time the guy walked in the door, we could just tell he had this aura. There was testosterone just effing flying. When he came into the fold, we rehearsed in Dime's mom's front living room with amps on 12, and there it was. I had a ball of tequila and we smoked a joint and played every Judas Priest song we knew. There's a lot of Priest on power metal. That was the one thing Daryl and Phil immediately had in common, he'd say. Released in the spring of 1988, Power Metal would be produced by Dime and Vinny's father Jerry, who also produced the group's three previous records and managed the band. It would be the Abbott Brothers' father who enlisted Kill guitarist Mark Ferrari on the track Proud To Be Loud, hoping it would get them a major label deal. Like Gold Mountain Records who passed on the group, the elder Abbott was perplexed by the band's change in sound. Not only that, but Pantera became more of a volatile band with Anselmo joining. With Brown recalling in the book Louder Than Hell, The Oral History of Metal, Phil was a scrappy dude and his temper was out of control. He'd fight anybody at the drop of a goddamn hat. He made sure that when he walked into a room, people would know it. And that's where we come back to Donnie Hart and Phil Anselmo. When Anselmo joined the band, the other members of Pantera hadn't told Hart yet, and it eventually came to a head one night in a bar in Dallas where the members of Pantera plus Hart were hanging out. It would result in Anselmo punching out Hart in the bathroom. Even though power metal represented an important stepping stone to where Pantera was headed in the near future, the band's problems of the past still haunted them. They still couldn't get a record deal, 
Is Derek Shulman, who was the president and CEO of Atco Records, Pantera's future label in the 90s, had checked the band out in the mid-80s when Terry Glaze was still fronting the group, but gave the band another look, recalling in the book Louder Than Hell. I had listened to their self-produced album Power Metal with their new singer Phil Anselmo when I was at Polygram, and although it was a well-crafted, heavier album with fantastic playing, it still did not have that unique quality they would ultimately acquire. It was not at the time particularly distinctive from the artists that I was involved with, like Bon Jovi, Cinderella, and Kingdom Come. The other problem from the past was that the band still had their glam look and even used their old glam names on the album credits for power metal. It would be Anselmo who gave the band an ultimatum, revealing in the book Louder Than Hell, we were down in Houston, Texas in 1988 and I had effing had it with our look. I was dead serious I was not going to do another show in spandex. We had a huge argument, a knockdown, drag out effing huge fight that spilled into Fort Worth. It was ugly at first but it proved that the brotherhood was there. I could jump on stage in the same clothes I wore all day and sing the effing songs. That bred confidence and a new fire in our bellies, he'd say. As for Schulman, he would have a change of heart over the band once Pantera's attorney showed him a tape of the band performing live, with him recalling, watching Phil together with Daryl on stage on this tape was mesmerizing. How did the band members feel about the record today? Well, Anselmo would tell Revolver, to say I'm proud of it, no I'm not, but to say that we as a band were still trying to discover who the F we were, and what we could do, that's very evident. I did the best I could and I think the songs were heavier overall and more attacking, he'd say. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching, be sure to like button and subscribe, we'll see you again Rock and Ultra Story Sticker.